Father, we bless your name today. You are good. You're better than good. We can't praise you or thank you enough. For all that you've done. If we had 10,000 tongues, it would not be enough to give God praise for all that he has done for us. so good, Lord, you are good, you've been better than good, I can't praise you enough, I owe you my life, can't praise you enough,
Lord God, Lord God, Lord God, as I bring my tithes and offering into the storehouse, as I bring my tithes and offering. You promise to open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing that there will not be enough room to receive it. Lord, I accept your promise. I also accept your promise to rebuke the devourer for my sake. And I stand on your word that declares all nations, All nations shall call me blessed.
Lordy, everybody. Is that your question? God has been as good as God has been to us. The Lord told me something about a month ago and recounting some of the things that we've encountered lately. Anybody been through anything? Let's see, one, two, three. But he told me, he said, you live through it and you're better for it. I wish you put that out in, in the atmosphere. I live through it and I'm better for it. I had a purpose. Are y'all having communication? Are you having problems communicating? Can y'all hear me? So we were we were requested to do something in unity. Hasha, first thing I want to do is rebuke every demon. He came up in here, but he got to go. Hey, shot. This is the day that he <laughs> And we shall rejoice and be glad. So somebody give God praise that you made it through. And he's still here. Oh, God. Ah, God. I feel the Holy Ghost up here. Because the blessing came to give God an intentional praise. Amen. And I guarantee you, before I leave here, I'm going to praise, but I don't know what you. But somebody said, when, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. And if you think about it, you'll arrive at the destination called praise. Outside. You can't think of the goodness of the Lord and not pray. Just look up and say, Lord, you've been mighty, mighty good to me. Lord, you've been mighty, mighty good. I came to give you, I came, came to give him a public praise for a private delivery. Oh my God. All right, all right, all right. Will y'all help me to bless this servant of this house? Bless him, bless the Lord for him. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. The Bible says that the church is the pillar and ground of truth. So if you can't get any truth anywhere else, you know what the political system looks like. People can't discern what is true, what not true, and they talk about the lie. But well, over in Thessalonians chapter number two, the Bible says that because they believe not the truth, the Lord sent a strong delusion that they might believe a lie and be damned. You ought to thank God that you know the truth. The truth is liberating. Truth will set you free. Oh my God. I, I'm trying to be nice, but I don't know what I might do before it's I came to intentionally praise the Lord. Intentionally praise the Lord. God bless you. May we this. You today, we will honor you from the Lord to goodness and all that. We'll talk a little more about that. But uh, y'all were doing good. Somebody give God the best praise you have. Give God that reserve phrase, the reserve phrase, the reserve phrase. Whoa, oh, oh, yeah. A few years ago, I had a 
I had three strokes and I had a heart attack. And I was in Ohio. Just give me a couple minutes. You can sit in a couple minutes. I was wondering whether they listened. Now I know they were not listening. They were listening back there. I said, you can sit in a couple minutes. I was in Ohio, and we were getting ready to get on a plane and come back to Baltimore. And we were having breakfast with Bishop Smith. But anyway, I had a heart attack. And, uh, and they rushed me to the hospital. Mother said, what's going on with you? And I said, nothing. She said, no. So I gave her my wallet. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> then she knew when I gave her my wallet. <laughs> but the point is, uh, I, was, I told the doctor, I said, well, when I get back to second, uh, Baltimore, he said, if you get on the plane, you're not going back to Baltimore. So they operated on me then. Within about two hours, my kids were there and all that. But I'm saying these things, so it was right at Thanksgiving time and the Lord brought me back. And then on Thanksgiving, they were all at my house and the Holy Ghost said, it could have been another way. Y'all miss me. It could have been another way. So I told my son Jonathan to write a song and he wrote the song, put it in the album that it could have been another. My point is, all you got to do is just, while you stand there, just to, to take a fraction of a second to think of the goodness of God. I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the... Hey, somebody give me my high praise. High praise. High, high. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Now, now you may be seated. <laughs> Thank God for my armor bearer, Elder Boone, and Lady Boone, and all. My wife just got out of uh, rehab uh, three, three days ago, four days ago. And uh, she had an operation and she couldn't walk. And they operated and then had a negative reaction from her. so that's why she's not here today she wanted she wanted to be here for her friend and also to give support and just to be in the house of the lord Amen. And so i said all that to say that this last few weeks or so and especially these 19 months of covid but in these last few weeks of, uh, there's just been a series of things. Can I tell you, you don't have to look for trouble. Trouble is bodacious. Trouble will come to your house and say, I'm not going anywhere. And cross his legs to show his intent. But I found out that we have power. Many of the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord Delivered them out of them all. Put this in that atmosphere. I'm going through something. But. I'm coming out. I'll say it. I'm coming out becomes self-fulfilling. In where you have what you say. If you don't want to proclaim your victory. Then you know. Stay where you are. But I'm coming out. Am I talking to anybody with the warrior's mentality? You got a warrior's mentality. Lord have mercy. All right, yes. And it depends on how you come out. Some people are coming out, but they're going to be so messed up when they come out. You ever, you ever talk to some bitter saints? Y'all don't know nothing about bitter saints. But we, we're on the other side of town. So I should move over here. <laughs> Because you know what's here today? And I'm not just talking, daughter. I, I, my spirit, 
there's victory in this house. I'm going to show you in a minute. There is a spirit of victory in this house. You came in one way, some of y'all going to leave out another. Hasha, I said there's victory in this house. You have power over all the power of the adversary. Thank you, Jesus. But what we need to do is change our mentality. You can stay in a negative situation so long you become negative. But there's a difference between joy, true joy, and what is called happiness. Paul said, I think myself happy. Just sitting here today and meditating on the word of God and the goodness of God. You can leave out of here and your outside circumstances may not have changed. But you have ushered in a change through your praise. Amen. Praise. I said praise. Praise God into your negative situation. Simon said if I make my bed in hell, he's there. But can I tell you, I'm not making no bed in hell. <laughs> Y'all don't get that. I'll connect with you after a while perhaps. I'm, I'm 87 years old. And I'm... And, uh, I've lived through a lot of things. I've seen the miraculous. I've seen God raise the dead. I don't know what that may do, but if we create the right atmosphere here and here, somebody will leave with a miracle. I said somebody will leave with a miracle. Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come in your name. Thank you. Thank you for your miraculous power. Your strength, your grace, Lord. Anything can happen in here. Anything your people are gathered. And you said, where there are two or three gathered in my name, Lord have mercy, and I'll be in the midst. And whatever they ask, I would do it in the name of Jesus. So we ask you, Lord, to bind the hand of the enemy. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Oh, God, your people, we come together. Bless us to be in your house. Lord, have mercy. Some got up this morning. Some didn't get up this morning. But we got up, Lord, with a thanksgiving in our heart. We come, Lord, to give you praise. We come to bless your name. We come, Lord, to carry out a kingdom manifesto. In the name of Jesus, now bless your people and strengthen your people. In the name of Jesus, we praise you. And as we worship you, let there be an interaction from the power of the Holy Ghost that's resident in us. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you and we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let us go to Judges. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to go to Psalm 75 and I want to go to the book of Judges. Hallelujah. Judges chapter number 5 and 4. Thank you, Lord. Judges, chapter number four, a couple of verses in chapter number five. Verse number two, and the Lord sold them into the hands of Japheth, the king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazar, the captain of whose host, Caesarea, which dwell in, in Harosha and of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of, of iron, and 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, the, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidim, she judged Israel at that time. Let's go to verse number 14. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up for this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Caesarea into thine hands. Is not the Lord gone out from thee? So Barak went down and uh, went down from the Mount of Tabar 
and 10,000 men uh, after him. I uh, broke my glasses. <laughs> this is a sidebar. But our last service was in Utah, Bishop. Bishop came and prayed, came to preach, and he said, I left my glasses at home. So he, he asked to borrow my glasses. And it was almost 40 years ago, 30 some years ago. So I loaned him my glasses, and he didn't ever use them, he just preached. And he preached. And the anointing. <laughs> and then, then when he finished, he said, It was the glasses. <laughs> So I ought to borrow your <laughs> Amen. And uh, in chapter number five, the inhabitants of the village cease, and they cease in Israel until that I, Nabor, arose and chose, I arose a mother in Israel. To that I, Nabor, arose and I rose a mother in Israel. I want to read one more verse from Psalm 75. Verse number six, for promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Say with me, say, this is the Lord's doing. This is the Lord's doing. Say it again with some conviction. This, this is the Lord's doing. The Lord's doing. I found out something. May I say this? I, I smell victory in the house. Amen. You all may be seated. Uh, you all remember Pastor White, don't you? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I was saved under her ministry. And uh, I've had the same experience since then. That of uh, smelling the aroma, both of evil spirits, demons, you know, but also smelling the fragrance of the Holy Ghost. If you ever, ever have what I call it an epiphany, that is a visitation from God, the Holy Ghost. I remember I was worshiping, that was 47 years ago, 48 years ago, and uh, the Holy Ghost came in to the house and fulfilled, filled the whole house where they were sitting and gave me a prophetic word uh, that she, she, she being my wife shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name James David Nelson Jr. Of course, I testified to the saints. They said, Lord didn't tell you that. But the Lord thy God will do nothing but reveal it to the servant, my servant, the prophet. I'm trying to say that when the house filled with the aroma of God, the fragrance of God, it smells kind of like uh, frankincense, myrrh, something you can't explain, but it is a sweet smelling odor. If you remember in the book of... Uh, Revelations chapter number five, the Bible says when the seal was broken because John was weeping because nobody was able to open the seal. And the Bible says that uh, uh, the prophet told him, said, don't weep. He says that the line of the tribe of Judah has prevailed and there appeared a lamb. Y'all don't get that either. The lion of the tribe of Judah prevailed but instead of seeing a lion, he saw a lamb. That was the lamb whose blood prevailed and he's still washing us and cleansing. But the Bible says when the seals were broken, that uh, the vials also were broken and the sweet smelling odor emitted from those vials and went up into the nostrils of God. I'm trying to tell you that they are preserved prayers. And when we develop a spiritual sensitivity then you can smell the aroma of God. The only reason I'm saying that today uh, 
is there's a disconnect, but we're about to connect. But there is a, a smell of victory in this house. I said there's a smell of victory in this house. Oh, oh shout out. Somebody give him one more praise. One more praise right there. Victory. Now say victory. Say it again. Victory. We used to sing a song, the victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace and the Lord fight my battle. I was telling somebody this morning, I said, uh, uh, if you're going to fight, God won't fight. But he said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. Said us, fret not yourself because of evil doers. Don't be envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut off. Lord, have mercy. I'm trying to tell you that God is getting ready. He's up to something big, big. I said big. He's up to something big. I can feel it. I can feel it in my, my, the pulsations of my spirit. Hallelujah. Uh, don't get weary in well-doing. In due season, you shall reap if you faint not. Today, we're here to celebrate God, of course, and also the servant of the Lord. I was telling them this morning, uh, uh, I was thinking a lot about Sister Hattie, Evangelist Hattie, you, you know, she, the position she was in. But when God puts you up, that's your place. You're not taking anybody's place. The problem with the church, a lot of people are out of place. But when you're in place, Lord have mercy, God is dispelling in this generation and in this time, uh, he's dispelling a lot of notions and, and I hope nobody be offended, but if you are offended, that's all right because God moved on. Uh, they, had a, they had a prejudice against women in the church. And in society, I know y'all don't like, but it's okay. No, I'm gonna preach over it anyway. So, but the point I'm trying to make to you, we put women in a certain category, certain things that they can't do. So they had the good old boys club, and with the good old boys club, there was certain things that they're restricted with. But this is the season of grace. Somebody say grace. If you don't have attitude, say grace. And so the Bible says in Christ, in Galatians 3.20, there's neither male nor female, but all are one in Christ Jesus. Go on, talk to me, somebody. And so what I'm saying that God is blowing the, the, the myth that men had as it re regards women, because what God didn't deal with the uh, gender, he's dealing with anointing. Just because you get a title doesn't make you what the title says. That's why everybody so interested now in getting title, especially we of our ethnicity because uh, we were slaves and the first person that was given recognition in, in our community uh, was a black preacher. And because of that, uh, uh, some of them couldn't even read. It, it's not an indictment because there was a restriction on, on getting education. Blacks had to work in the cotton field. Y'all know all that. This is part of our history. But the point I'm trying to make is that some of them carried an anointing that was way beyond the educational value of, come on, talk to me. They didn't have any degrees. Some of them couldn't even read. So they had, in every church, they had readers. And guess who the readers were? Women. And so they would give a, a reading, read, and they would read, and, <laughs> and they were to give extra Jesus on what was read. Lord have mercy. And through divine revelation, many of them were able to do it. But others would say, you know what that means? They say, praise God, it means just what it said. Startling revelation. So the point is, uh, God would take people without formal education and give them divine revelation. Come on, talk to me. And the problem is now that we have education, but we don't have a lot of inspiration and revelation that come from the Holy Ghost. So we come up with a whole lot of stuff that that's not even biblical, Lord help me. Let, let me move on because I'm trying to lay a little groundwork so you will understand. Uh, so when, when uh, Joshua died, he said, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. 
Uh huh. And so success without succession is failure. I'm dealing with some churches now over church that the pastor didn't install anybody. And then now we got people competing with one another and we have all these elections and this, that, that. They don't even have an election in the New Testament. The only election they had was when they were waiting for the Holy Ghost. And Peter, with, without the Holy Ghost, said this scripture needs to be fulfilled. Somebody needs to take Judas's place. The Holy Ghost didn't tell him to do it. And, 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 and Jesus didn't tell him to do it. But Peter was impulsive. So they, they selected two. And when they selected, they asked the Lord, which of these two? But neither one of them were the ones. Oh, oh what did you say? I said, neither one of them, because you give a person a title don't mean that they fit the title. God does not anoint you for titles. He anoints you for functions in the body. In the body. Lord have mercy. And I'm trying to tell you, there would be women bishops and women this, that, and the other. And they are. I'm not knocking it one way or the other. So don't go back and care the wrong report. But if the Bible says there's neither male nor female in him. So whoever he anoints. So what is in that platform is a person called Deborah. Deborah, Lord, my help me, Jesus. I'm trying to tell you that Deborah became one of the judges. Instead of all male judges, they, the Bible says that if there was a woman called Deborah, and I'll talk about her in a minute. Not only was it Deborah, but Huldah. When the men lost the book of the law in the house of the Lord. How can you lose the book of the Lord and, and the word of God in the house? It must have become an entertainment center in order for to lose the word of God. I don't know about anybody else, but I know that word is precious. Without the word of God, what would we do? The word is life full and life giving. Lord have mercy. And the word itself is like the Bible says, Jesus said, uh, the, the word I speak is spirit and is life. So when the, you get the word in you, you also get life in you. And the life of the word changes your life. Come on, talk to me. Not only does it give you life, but it changes your life because the word is spirit and the word is life. It's full of life. Come on, talk to me. So the word, the more word you get in you, the more life you have because the word is eternal. Lord have mercy. The word is quick. The word is powerful. It says in Psalm 33 and 9, he spake and it was done. All God has to do is speak. Can I tell you some of, somebody tell you this uh, at this particular time? Can I tell you that the word of God that has been spoken over you, you cannot die until the word comes into life. <laughs> the word has to be executed until the Bible said he spake when he spoke. The word went out of his mouth and the word cannot return to me void. When God speaks, something has to happen. <laughs> he didn't put a, a time frame on it. A lot of people become discouraged because you got a word from God, but your patience ran out because and you allowed time, but there's no terminal uh, experience with the word of God. The word of God is forever. It's quick. It's powerful. It is forever. Come on, talk to me. I just need one or two amens so we can get over this hump because y'all look at me like you don't understand what I'm saying. I'm telling you that the word of God Period. The word of God is life. Come on, talk to me. And if God says something's going to happen, he told Abraham 400 years before the children of God were released from uh, uh, Egypt. He told him what was going to happen. He told Abraham what was going to Come on, talk to me. Then he told him that he was going to have a son. Lord have mercy. He thought it was through Sarah. And it was through Sarah, but they gave uh, uh, Hagar and so forth and so on. And he had a son at 89 years old. But God said, no, that's not the one. When I spoke and told you, that's you and Sarah. In order for the word to come to pass, you have to have your faith built up because faith comes by hearing 
than hearing the word. Come on, talk to me. So no matter who's bringing the word, as long as you believe the word, it's got to take place. The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And I'm sitting up here looking at you, you looking at me. But I know this is a word house. Hallelujah. If he didn't have a Bible, you still get the word in his house. Come on, talk to me, somebody. The word, the word. I'm trying to focus your attention on what God says, uh, not gender. So this woman, uh, Deborah, the Bible says she was a judge. Uh, she was a judge and she had a tree down in the, the land. And the Bible said that people would come to her and listen to hear what God is saying. In other words, when you had a problem, uh, you, would go to the, you would go to what they call the seer. They couldn't see some of them in the natural uh, 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 spiritual things, but what they would do is see what God is saying in the spirit. I don't know about anybody today, but I want a word from God. See what God is saying in the midst of COVID-19. Hallelujah. God is still speaking. This word that was written some thousands of years before, the word is still alive. It's still active. And the Bible says when the word returns back to God, it has to say mission accomplished. I'm trying to tell you what the Lord said to Paul when he was on the, uh, on the ship. Uh, and, and, and he said before that in, in Acts uh, chapter number 23, the Bible says that as you witness for me in Jerusalem, you also must witness for me in Rome. Uh, do you hear what I'm saying? So the Bible says when they headed for Jerusalem, uh, when they headed for Rome, the Bible says uh, that the Lord had already given Paul a word. So what did the word do? The word kept him doing storm, doing a Eurachlodon and everything. The Bible says that Luke writing about it said that uh, we, we gave up all hope of living. But the word was still spoken. God will give you a pre-word. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Before things happen, God will give you a way in. But he also will give you a way out. And after they came out of the storm, a snake latched onto him. A poisonous snake, if you please. Latched onto Paul. And Paul shook him off. Why? Because he had a preceding word. I don't know who I'm talking to and what's going on in here. But I can tell you this. If God has given you a word, it's got to come to pass. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care who says what. And, and how many witches and warlocks speak. Oh, God. I, I feel the Holy Ghost moving in here. Something has got to break. Something has got to give. And our God. And the Bible says that Deborah said to them, uh, uh, he said to uh, Barak, he said, listen, this is a day of victory. I don't know how much I got to say to make you understand that this day is a day of victory. This day not being uh, in the day and time which we live, it means a 24-hour picture in this this classic setting, God says, he said to her, he threw her, he said, listen, uh, he said, today is the day of victory. If you don't get nothing else out of this, I hope you understand what I'm saying as a prophet of the Lord. Today is a day of victory. Today, all the tormenting and what you've gone through and been through, God sent me to declare today is a day of victory. Say it with me. Today is a day of victory. Today is a day that God's going to release you for whatever is holding the saints bound. If you could just repeat it and believe it in your heart. The Bible said that Jesus told Martha and Mary, today you'll see the glory if you just believe Somebody, I need somebody to shout. I believe, I believe God. Come on, somebody. I shake that off of you. Whatever it is that disconnect in here, help me and say today is the day. Today is the day. This is the day that many of you all have been waiting. God said something supernatural is going to take place. I feel the power of the enemy trying to strive against the word, but he can't strive. He can't get the 
victory. Because the word that he spoke uh, over this assembly is this true gospel. Uh, Lord have mercy. Is this the true gospel church? Uh, I remember when you first started the Sunday you started. Uh, I know the, when you were down on, on Pulaski. Lord have mercy. Uh, I remember you bought my old church uh, on, on, on Fulton. <laughs> 1508 Fulton and look what God has done you ain't seen nothing yet God's not through blessing this church I wish I had some help God sent Helen here at this right time she went away and God brought her back he brought her back for this day and so I proclaim the victory I declare the victory the devil don't have me confused but somebody's confused because of the power of the enemy. He's trying to bring confusion. Wherever there's confusion, there's every evil work. But this person, you know, you've seen God use her. You've seen the blessings of God. This church is blessed because she has this woman here. And not to be spoke to her husband, thank God that they're one team. They're working together. So you get two for the price of one. Come on, talk to me I'm trying to tell you that you're blessed. You're blessed because you got a man of God that's looking into the future. Knows that he needs some help. I wish I had some help. But she's doing what she's doing. Not for the title. Lord have mercy. She's doing it because there's a need for it. She's doing it because God is in this. God is orchestrating. God said, I put one up. And I take one down. This is not from man. It's from the Lord. The Lord knows the future. He knows what's going on. He knows the church is going to need some help. He knows the church is going to grow. Hallelujah. God's getting ready to save some of your family. The prayers that have been prayed. I know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my grandmother and my mother praying. Ha oh God. I go and got a little education. So we done the research on what they call comparative religions. So why are we not, uh, uh, you know, one of the religions of the world? Ha. Huh? And so we tried to make sense out of it. So in class, they said that religion, the commonality of religion is, is, is man's humanity to man. And so I was trying to explain that to my grandmother who got the Holy Ghost way back in Azusa Street. Y'all ain't here with them. She said to me, she said, boy, I don't know what you're talking about. She said, but I'm praying for you. You ought to thank somebody. Somebody prayed for you. Just like you prayed for your children. Just like you prayed for your neighbor. And this is the season that God said, I'm going to show you who the real saints are. Where are the real saints? Where are those that believe God? This COVID is not going to take us out. The Bible lets us know that you that are alive and remain, Lord have mercy, you're not just alive, but you're remaining faithful to God. Can I get a witness up here? I don't care if they lock down everything, but the Bible says I once was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his feet made bread. Lord have mercy. When God is in something, he don't care about the odds. So my God, ah, they went against a nation that had 2,900 uh, uh, carts and, uh, and, and, and Lord have mercy. And they went against them with 10,000 and they had 300,000 uh, along with the chariots. Can I get a witness? They had 900 chariots of iron that's intimidating but when you got God on your side it doesn't matter how many folks are against you when you got God on your side come on somebody and so here uh -huh. she was she, she was telling them Deborah was telling them through a song see you got two kinds 
your songs. One you sang for the victory, and the other you sang because you got the victory. And I'm wondering today how much you have a faith in God. Because I don't care what the devil throws at you. I don't care what the odds are. You got to understand God will give you a song in the night season. Come on here. The Bible says when it's dark at night, how God, when demons descend, look like they come out of the woodwork like roaches or something. But the Bible lets us know that God will give you a song. Can I get a witness? So here Deborah is singing a song of victory. Deborah and Barak, they got together, the brother and the sister, they got together fighting the demons and powers. The Bible said God let it rain, so the chariots got stuck in the mud, and so they didn't do him no good. Are y'all still with me? When you got God fighting for you, it doesn't matter the odds. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand that when God is on your side, you've got victory assured. I don't know how much longer I will preach, but I feel like just celebrating because I don't like the spirit that I feel. But God is in this place. Somebody came here today discouraged. Somebody came fighting demons and devils. Somebody came here and said, if I could just get to the house of God, everything would be all right. I came to tell you that Jesus is in the place. Jesus is in the house. Come on, talk to me. So because he got the victory at Calvary, Lord have mercy, I'm trying to tell you, you got the victory when you got Jesus. He won the victory at Calvary. The fact that he got up from the grave, the fact that on the third day he got up, we talk about the devil. Jesus uh, and wounded for our transgression, bruised for our liberty. The chastisement of our peace uh, was upon him, and with his stripes uh, we are healed. I came to tell you today uh, there's healing in this house, uh, there's deliverance in this house, uh, there's financial blessing in this house. Uh, come on, talk to me. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 11, it tells us what we call the heroes of faith. They went through hell. They went through high waters. They went to fight. Come on, talk to me. They fought. I said they fought. And that's hold on the word of God. And the word brought them through. When they got to the Red Sea, Lord have mercy. The God said, Moses, what's in your hand? Sometimes we don't use what we already got, but you got enough in you. If you never heard another scripture, you got enough in you to win this battle because all you got to understand that Jesus won the victory. When he got up, the Bible said that demons and devils were fighting. Demons and devils tried to hold him down. And the Bible said, Jesus made an open show of the devil. In other words, in the devil's headquarters, the Bible said that Jesus said, I'm coming out on the third day. So on Friday, Friday night, on Saturday and Saturday night, but early, I said early, I said early, Sunday morning, he got up, he got up, put it in the air, he got up with victory in his hand, all power in heaven and in earth is in my hand. Lord have mercy. He said it's the Father's good pleasure to bless his people. I want you to understand that God ordained when you were born. Lord have mercy. The position was held for you. 
nobody else could get the position but you because God had it reserved for you I don't care somebody might sit in the chair but the chair isn't there the chair belongs to you and God said it's your place come on talk to me I don't care who I suppose what God does but God said I know what I'm doing I know when to do I know where to do I know how to do the 10,000 fall at your right hand shall not come now you I'm trying to quit I'm trying to come in here but I feel something in my spirit that needs releasing you came to the house of God you came in here to hear from God and all I got Lord have mercy I have an iPad I have I telephone. I have two notes and all that, but God is not into it. So let me just talk to you. I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin break dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus telling me to still fight on. He promised. He promised. I promise never to leave me, never to leave me alone. He's been in the lion's den. He's been in the fiery furnace. Come on here. You're not serving a tense God. You're serving a God that's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Able, he's able. The devil may lock you up like they did Paul and Silas, but at midnight, at midnight, at midnight, they sang praises. At midnight, they prayed. It's what you do when you get in trouble, but when you get into trouble. I heard the psalmist say, I look to the hills from I look to the hills from which come my, uh, my help my help coming from the Lord. Come on, talk to me. I found out everybody's not happy when you're promoted by God. But some of the same people that talk about Joseph, Lord have mercy, they had to come right back and get his blessings. Come on, somebody. When he had a chance to retaliate, he chose not to retaliate. He chose, he chose to give God thanks. He chose to give God praise. Every day when we pray, we say, Father, forgive me my sins. Y'all would acknowledge that you sin since you had. But I will. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. I got to close you. I'm trying to tell you something. We can block our own promotion. We can block our own whatever God's getting ready to do with us. Come on, talk to me. Because of what's in our heart. Lord have mercy. I tried to tailor me what I felt the Lord wanted to say. Can I get a little witness in here? But what I tried to find, like try to tell you in the practical term, you can hold up your own blessing. But as soon as as you make up your mind to forgive, God says, I'll forgive you. There's not a one of us in here that won't need the forgiveness of God. If you get to heaven, it's only because of the mercy and grace of God. Your grace and mercy has brought me. 
I get to the place, you got to stop worrying about what your neighbor's going to say. Some people would give God a spontaneous praise, but David's own wife, because he praised God till his clothes came loose, and she thought she was too good. She thought the him being a king, he not ought not to expose himself. But can I tell you, David began to think of what it used to be, of the times he was in the cave, and who brought him out. Because if we just think of what God has done, you got people that come by and be sympathetic, but they can't do nothing about it. But the Bible lets us know while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. And every now and then, I think about God and what he's done for me. I've done things so bad, I wouldn't tell nobody, but God knew it. And some things with us, God could have exposed you, but you got to have a ministry with grace and mercy. Come on, somebody. There's still good in there. A lot they used to do. They used to embarrass people in the public arena. I've seen it done so many times that people would be too ashamed to come back. And if they did come back, somebody would go into their past and pull their past into the future. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Lord have mercy. But if it wasn't for the goodness of God, if it wasn't for the grace of God, somebody ought to shake yourself. Shake yourself and give him praise. Shake yourself and give him praise. You know that God has been good. You know he brought us from a mighty long way. You know what you've done and I know what I've done. Don't deserve to be here. But he looked beyond all of my fault and saw my knees. I feel like giving God some real praise. I feel like blessing the name of the Lord. I shall my heart knowing what we've done. But thank God, thank God, thank God for the blood. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. What can what? away my sins. Nothing. Nothing but the blood. I gotta get out of here. Nothing but the blood. It's the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. I plead the blood. 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 Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, blood, the power of the name, the power of the name, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, the blood, the Holy Ghost, the word, the name, the name of the Lord, there's a strong power, the church is running in, and I say, I've been washed, I've been washed in the blood. Come on, somebody. When you were baptized in the name of Jesus, he took the power of the blood, put it in the name. Come on, somebody. And when I got baptized, it washed my sins away. I wish I had somebody who declare my sins, my sins are under the blood. I wish I had somebody to declare I got power to the blood. Power to live holy. Power to overcome. The power to rejoice in the midst of what I'm going through. Nothing changed in that category, but because I am a son of God, 
because you are daughter in Zion. Come on, somebody. You don't have to go and get a sex change. Y'all forgive me. But that ain't gonna change nothing. You still got an Adam's apple. Come on, somebody. But when God took Eve out of Adam, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. He took all the woman out of the man. And now you can stand justified. By faith, justified. Declared righteous, justified. Declared holy. There's so many people trying to live holy without the Holy Ghost. But you can live a good life. You can live a clean life. But you can't live holy without the Holy Ghost. If you got it, we used to sing a song. Have you got it? Like the Bible says. Have you got it? You're going to need it. You're going to need it. You're going to need it. Like the Bible says. Everybody stand. In the fifth chapter, the fifth chapter of the book of Judges, Deborah is singing a song of victory. Do you know it took two women to kill Caesarea? One took a nail, hammer and a nail and drove it through his. Hello? I'm trying to tell you, don't underestimate the power of a woman. An anointed woman. This woman is anointed. Point to her. Point to her. Say, she is anointed. She is anointed. You can't let everybody lay hands on you. Their spirits have transferred themselves. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. But this is a holy, anointed woman. She's just as Deborah was subject to her husband. And takes a special kind of man. And you are special. He's loaded. I say he's loaded with the word. This is not a thing of competition. Compliment rather than competition. Headship is not bullshit. Say this, we're in this together. Say it, we're in this together. My last thing I want to say, there's a difference between the anointing that's on him than you. It, it, it's the same anointing. Now you're looking at me funny. But remember this, Korah and his group, because the demons have a way of always getting somebody on their side. The Bible said, rebuke not an elder. I have people say things about leadership. I'd be afraid to say. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Even Moses' sister and him and her brother, his brother, Aaron, and, uh, but can I tell you something? No, no person heard them. They got an attitude because of who Moses married. He married an Egyptian woman. He, he married a black woman. They would talk among themselves, but she was his older sister, Miriam. But can I tell you that God heard him? She, she, her penalty was seven days. She had she had uh, leprosy because she talked about the man. Be careful what you say about leadership. You got you got a praying man for a leader. 
You have a praying man or a leader. When God directs him to do something, then you submit. submit and what you don't understand, pray about it. Amen. Amen. God has searched everybody's heart everywhere. But he had this, this spot reserved for her. Give me, give me two cheers. Quick, quick. Y'all can be seated. going on.
Extend your hand this way. Yes, extend your hand this way. She Havanas. Lord, in solidarity. Approval of her husband. 
Let there be unity in the house. Extend your hand this way and say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Jesus' name, touch of us, son. in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, yes, 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 come on with it, come on with it. in this pastor I need you to make a proclamation formally she's now the assistant
you need to tell them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, everybody. It has been validated. It has been approved. It has been given clarity by your nation. Helen Merriweather is officially the assistant pastor of True Gospel Apostolic Faith Church. I'm saying that we thank God for fabulous Helen Merriweather officially. I said officially because we've already have operated for about 14 years and the sister pastor of True Gospel Apostolic Faith Church. Praise the Lord. So certainly today we certainly will honor to present her your assistant pastor, Daniel Helen Merriweather, True Gospel, receive the assistant pastor it has been validated. I said it been validated. It was already ordained by God. Hallelujah. But we have to go through these procedures so that the church knows that God has elevated the church. Don't stop. We need to do one more thing. There's some spirits. Yeah, we've been battling with y'all, y'all heard. All during the message. But you can't tell me the spirit of the adversary is greater than the spirit of God. Somebody say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So your pastor made a proclamation of elevation that came from God. Everybody don't agree with it. But we're getting ready right now to separate the men from the boy. Who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? When I count to three, I want everybody to give God a two-minute break. One, two, three.
Let me hear one more. Y'all hear that hallelujah? I come outside. If you have the audacity to give God a pure praise from your heart, watch America, watch God. Hey, help it out. Break breakthrough in this house. I say, breakthrough, breakthrough. Somebody shout, breakthrough. Well, break out.
together. Go ahead.
As I reflect back over the many years of so many fond memories, I am eternally grateful to my beloved sister, Evangelist Hattie J. Richardson, for introducing me to you, Evangelist Helen Merriweather. Little did you know that the introduction would produce such a lasting friendship and sisterhood. I salute you today, mighty woman of God, and want you to know that I love you and that you are God's choice for this divine assignment. The word of the Lord says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they walk and not faint. From this moment on, you may be infused with God's grace. May you walk in the strength and confidence that he created you to be anointed and be faithful to the man of God and to the things of God. This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Sincerely, Co-Pastor Sheila S. Montgomery. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lady Montgomery, for those kind words of expression of love, and certainly uh, she would have been here if it would have been possible. We thank the Lord, uh, certainly uh, Pastor Charles Bennett and his family, uh, he, uh, uh, he's one of the uh, foundational members of the True Gospel Apostolic Faith Church, charter member, and uh, certainly uh, God has blessed us and we, we, we have been working together for 30, 34 years, almost 35. So Pastor Ben is going to come and have some words of expression uh, at this time. Receive uh, Pastor Charles Benny. in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. It is a blessing to be here on this blessed occasion to celebrate not only evangelist Helen Merriweather, but a very dear friend of mine down through the years. As Bishop Richardson said, we are just family, and that is literally, spiritually, and naturally, we are family. But I'm just happy to be here and just just want to just say a little bit. Um, I could say so much about Evangelist Merriweather and also to Elder Gerald Merriweather. They are just both workers in the vineyard. I, I know I can say this, that she's not necessarily... Um, What's the right word? She's not so enthused or eager to step into any calling of God. Of course, she knows it is God's doing, but I'm saying she doesn't have that mindset that a lot of people have where they can't wait for the next promotion. And I just want to say that I know she's been a terrific blessing to me. She's not only been a worker in the vineyard, but she's an encourager, evangelist. She's anointed. Many have been healed by God through her. Praise the Lord. Many have been God have used her to fill many with the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord, somebody. So while it may feel like uh, this was a natural step, I just want to say that the journey of God is different for everybody. All the way from where she started to where she is now, it hasn't been easy. But she's shown her faithfulness in God, her faithfulness to this ministry. And it is just the logical choice of God 
as the scripture said, promotion doesn't come from the south or the east or the west, but it comes from God. And today, God's will, I'm so glad I want y'all to stand while I'm talking. Please just stand real quick. Thank you all for coming to today to support the service, show our love. As I said, she has been a blessing to our church, so we thank God for her. But this is the Lord's doing, as it's been said, and it's marvelous. True gospel, y'all support your pastor, your assistant pastor. She's been doing this, it's just official. And as I go to my seat at home, I always tell them, when it comes to promotion, I'm always looking for the one that's already doing it without the title. That way it's very easy to choose the one for the position. God bless you, love you all. Praise the Lord, everybody. So we're not going to pull on the time, but we, we're grateful. We know that a different one would like to probably have something to say, but uh, you may have a chance some other time. Praise the Lord. Uh, because if, if, if we start with one, we don't know what we have to stop. Praise the Lord. But I'm grateful. I, I want to say this as a, a pastor uh, for these 34 years, Vangelis, uh, Merriweather, and my sister Hattie, we were kind of looked on as the three musketeers because we, 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 we traveled so many places together and in and out. And some people, I think, they thought that Hattie was my wife. <laughs> I think they did, because, uh, you know, my wife was somewhat uh, conservative, like she wasn't really outspoken so much, but, 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 but they must have thought Hattie was my wife. But uh, I want to say this, Vangelis uh, uh, Merwether have been a, a, a go-getter first. The lover of soul. She was uh, uh, taught, instructed by Vangelis. Uh, Bobby Barney, as we know, there's nobody like her. She, is, she was an instrumental and and Pastor Bennett and my mom and different ones. So many got delivered through uh, Vinyless, uh, Bobby Barney and uh, Vinyless uh, Merriweather and also Vinyless Richardson worked with her and they have been a tremendous blessing uh, to this church. And Vinyless Merriweather have been uh, uh, like uh, working in that for capacity for many years. And uh, she was, I think most everybody here knew that she really was a sister pastor, but we just had to validate it. Amen. We had to make it uh, uh, official, main on the hand, and validate her position. So we say to you, all of the ministers, all of the True Gospel Church family. We still just one big family. We're all working together. Vice uh, Mayor being the assistant, she'll be doing the same thing she's been doing, working uh, with, with the ability God has given her. Uh, and she just have that position now, officially the assistant pastor. So. It's still requiring us working together in love and in unity. And we omit it in this thing. Is there anything else I need to say? Uh, oh yeah, we, we're gonna get, yeah. We're gonna, before I give up any this my weather, the privilege to come and to express the a gratitude for you coming and appreciation for all that have been done in the name of Jesus. 
Come on, let's receive the honorary at this time. You have to the honorary. A husband, ever, girl, turn away. We'll have a word and give us a benediction. Praise the Lord to the household of faith. We certainly honor the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to our pastor, praise the Lord. To all of the elders, to all of the evangelists, the officials, to the household of faith. We greet you in that matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for the true gospel, Apostolic Faith Church family. There's no family like you. And we are so glad to be a part of this family on today. There's so much that I would love to say, but time will not. We, we've been here for some time, so we don't want to keep holding and prolonging the time. But I just want to acknowledge a few people especially today. I want to acknowledge, as we have already acknowledged, the ministers. And I want to acknowledge my family. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for my family. For my brother, Rob, and all of you, Elder Richardson, Deacon Richardson. I even see my nephew, Gerald. Gerald was here. I thank God for him. And we do thank God for our companion. I thank God for you encouraging me. I just have to be real with this. I just have to be real. When I was first asked, I struggled. I really struggled. I asked Sharice, why did I ask Sharice? I asked Erica, why did I ask Erica? But I thank God because I knew that they would be supportive in whatever my decision was. So I'm grateful, Erica, it's so good to see you from Charlotte. Praise the Lord. And I speak this to my future son-in-law, Brother Cobra. It's so good to see you. Stand up. The pastor said stand up, Erica and Cobra. All right. God bless you. Thank God for you. And I'm, I'm not going to keep talking. But I have so many sons and daughters. Praise the Lord. So many daughters, Sister Juliet, and uh, uh, so many nieces, Sister Nikki, Quanisha, Darrell. There's Gerald. <laughs> Good to see you, Gerald, and everybody. But I, I just want to say this about God's will, Pastor. I, I really want to say this to you, Pastor Bennett. You did something that most pastors don't. You closed your church on a Sunday morning and you brought the saints here. True gospel. Stay on your feet. That, that's, that's love. Sister Valentine, my sweet niece, Brittany and everybody, little Trey and everybody that's in your respective places. Praise the Lord. I bless God for you and I thank God for those who said they would be watching today not able to be here. Lady Antoinette Singleton there in Lansing. Bless God. Thank God. Thank God for Evangelist Bobby Barney for those that are not able to be here. I love you all. Keep me in your prayers. I realize that when God moves you to another level somebody said there's a high devil for the next level so I know he's after he comes to steal 
kill, and destroy. But I bless God for you. I love you. He's a wonder.
She is a holy woman. She's a praying woman. She's, she reads the scripture. We pray together. We fast together. We read the, the Bible together. God has really blessed. I'm asking you to please pray for us. And we will always stay in God's righteous will. Because when when two when two are together in a family and pray together, you're gonna have results. And I can say God has really blessed me. And we need and we need your prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. true gospel to please pray please keep praying for our pastor and, 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 and evangelist Meriwether and myself all the saints of God and true gospel because we we plan to make it in we're not going through all these things suffering and going through things that we have in this particular life right now we want to make it we want to be ready when Jesus come oh praise God Father, in the name of Jesus, we look unto you. We thank you, dear God, for the word have gone forth today. We thank you for the fellowship of the saints of God. We thank you, dear God, hallelujah, that you have added to, to the ministry, dear God, in, in this ministry, that your power and your glory be magnified through in the midst of your people everywhere. Oh, God will always render the praise and the honor and the glory. Because we ask these things in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Praise the, praise the Lord. Uh, our manner is usually we take our tithes and offering as you exit. And today we got a little off track. So to the members of True Gospel, if you still have your tithes and offering, that can be a basket in the back. Praise the Lord. God bless you.